just let people in as they go through Dr. Navarro. I'm grateful for your time and getting started for members that are watching. Give me, I'm pulling it up on YouTube and then we will start it. Tony, I'm putting you on mute. Of course, it's got to be Tony. All right, good afternoon, everybody. I'm excited to have Dr. Francisco Navarro, a good friend of the gym, friend of myself. And what we're going through is May, which is Mental Health Month. Dr. Navarro is a psychiatrist. Uh, at Mind Health Institute in Pasadena. We're gonna go through a lot of that, but without further ado, we have the wellness challenge going on. Dealey and I discussed back best practices and approach to the program. And I just said, we need to get Dr. Navarro on. He is a wealth of knowledge. Many of you who do know him have probably experienced some of the gifts that he gives to you day in and day out when you do discuss things with him. He is the founder and CEO of Mind Health Institute Pasadena. The topics that we're gonna get into are hopefully relevant to us as a community, you as an individual, and, you know, possibly as a parent for a lot of us that are parenting. And, you know, the, the biggest thing that we're going through here is if you are in need of help, go and get help. We are here to encourage you to get help and be aware that it's okay to ask. Uh, a quick little story on, on Dr. Navarro. He is a professor and child adolescent psychiatrist at um, UCLA and the CEO and founder of Mind Health Institute. He is a triple board certified in child, adolescent, and adult psychiatry and is on the board, American Board of Integrative and Holistic Medicine, which is awesome. Holistic medicine, guys. Dr. Navarro is passionate about caring for teens, children, adults with mental health con concerns, including, but not just limited to, depression, anxiety, and ADHD. His, his life mission is to increase awareness of the common illnesses in hopes of decreasing suffering and eradicating the stigma surrounding mental health. Uh, Dr. Navarro understands how to guide individuals and their families from surviving to thriving in an in integrative and holistic way. He believes that medicine can help, but also knows that the brain is more complicated than just simply taking a pill. He, his innovative programs include uh, Neurovert. I'm gonna mess this one up, I think. Hey. Eclusin, Equisled, Equisled, yep. and the Resiliency, Resiliency Wellness Program, which I'm excited to talk about here shortly, which incorporates neuromodul neuromodulation, neurofeedback, functional medicine, genetics, neuromodulation, yeah. neuromodulation, thank you, talk therapy, and, and keen assisted therapy, movement, and adult and kids yoga and mindfulness. Dr. Navarro is an avid bodybuilder and fun story in December, 2019, he placed second at the world for lightweight body weight, body building masters category at the world world's natural bodybuilding federation, New York. Uh, with that, I think he placed first in September, October here in Southern California uh, at the, the first one to get him into the national when not meditating yeah. and exercising. Correct. No, it was, it was it was in uh it was in San Francisco. Okay, so oh yeah, because you went up there, yes. So he he had a couple that got there, and he looks amazing. Uh, when not meditating, exercising at five a.m. every morning, which we will get more into that, or taking care of his paid pa patient, the native Angelino, uh, who grew up next to Mr. Ramirez, our very own member. Uh, enjoys being a father to his nine-year-old son and a loving husband to his wife of 15 years. I will remind you that the views and opinions of Dr. Francisco Navarro do not reflect the views or opinions of UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles, in all capacity. So just a quick little rundown of him. Uh, my connection with friend Dr. Navarro is he walked in the gym early days. I'm talking first month of us opening the gym and we connected for, I, I'm not going to lie, an hour. We went through and just started. He, turns out he was quizzing me on a lot of questions and making sure that what, like all of you probably, find out if we're the right place for you. Uh, we, we connected. He put a lot of faith and trust in me and, and our community, our staff, and brought many of his high school childhood friends 
from Tony and, and Wendy down below to uh, Alfredo, who's Tony's friend. Like there is a lot of group people that Francisco and Iris brought into our community. And I'm grateful for that. On top of that, the extension has went on where the, men, the MHI's uh, director of wellness is coach Ken Cervera, who was our very first head coach at, at the gym also. And it's exciting to see the growth and opportunities that Dr. Navarro has shared and, and allowed to grow within there. And of course, with Ken showing all kinds of growth within what he can do specifically for people instead of doing something um, just as a, as a coach. These are like ways to grow more into the prescription or prescribed plan. And it, it's awesome to see the, the growth. So Dr. Navarro, without further ado, I'm gonna ask you a few questions. Sure. If there's anything you wanna add, I'm, I'm grateful for, but tell us a bit about yourself. What, what should we know? I mean, I think you pretty, pretty much said it all. And, and, and I think <laughs> I, Iris does a nice job of, <laughs> of sharing um, my background a little bit here. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not the best at selling myself. That's not what I do. I, I'm here to, to talk a little bit more about a message, uh, a message about mental health and movement and why that's so important for all of us. Um, and, but, but this all starts, I mean, really goes back to when we were kids. I mean, Tony kind of here in, in one of the listeners, um, really going back to those days where I realized something that was critical to me feeling better. And that was exercise. I mean, it was plain and simple. It was, if I moved, I felt better. I think if you ask, and I'm gonna be conservative here, if you ask 50% of the population, and again, I'm being conservative, 50% of the population, do they feel better when they move their body? You will get an astounding yes. That's the truth. Sometimes it sucks when you're in the middle of a work out of the day, right? No one said that it's going to be easy, right? We understand that negative affect in the middle of high intensity interval training doesn't feel good, but afterwards you feel great, right? I mean, I, there was a few times, more than a few times, I remember working out with Paul and, and Paul wasn't having a good time in some of those workouts, right? And, um, but afterwards, Right? It's, it's, it's the product that comes outside of that. So early on, that's sort of the drive of this. And um, I just thought that through medicine, it would be a way to really extend that message. Right? I think if I did this through a different platform, um, other than medicine, you know, it, it doesn't get its credibility. Um, so, so here I am. Uh, so I grew up in LA and, and, you know, really focused on how to help youth, how to help teens, uh, that's the population that's having the biggest trouble, you know, uh, trouble with, for most of them, for most of what happens is their mental health and a lot of changes are happening there. But we understand it's not just children, it's not just teens, it's also us as adults, right? We're all sort of struggling with something. And during these times right now, we're all feeling it. And there's this global impact right now a layer thick of if you were if you thought you were stressed before i mean we're in it now right I, this is a different level of intensity of stress so so you know really what i'm trying to do here is and share with you all is okay we're, we're in the middle of a crisis right i mean we've all gone through this we've all gone through a crisis doesn't seem like this one but we all have gone through some level of crisis and, and, you know, we, we have some, some information, some memory of being able to move through it. You know, it's, it's like, a, I like to say it, it has many mask crisis. This is just a different mask. It doesn't mean that we change what we do. It doesn't mean that we change our routine. It doesn't mean that we change, we stop working out or moving our body. In fact, it's the opposite. This is the time where you actually need to tighten up tying up the bolts on your routine, tying up the bolts on your workouts and not skip out because there's a pandemic, right? Um, 
I'm not trying to say push through and pull yourself up by the bootstraps. I think that's insensitive, but I am saying this is the most important time in our lifetime, in our lifetime, where we have to be able to keep this routine going. So, and I know I got, I got away from like, I don't like talking about myself. That's not what this no, is about. This is about why are we meeting here today? And what are we meeting here today? It's really to, to give you that data, that data that you all need to sustain your workout. So, okay, so you're not in the gym. We all wish we were, including myself. Uh, I'm a little bit of a lone wolf when it comes to training at this point. But I miss, I miss being in the gym. I lift, uh, holding on to a bar, you know, doing some squats, all that. I, I miss it. And yeah, we got a little equipment here and there, but it's not the same. And it's not the same, not just because of the equipment. You can buy equipment. You can get it delivered to your house. But it's about the community that you have, the connections that you make. And that's the biggest loss we've experienced now. Right? So adapting to that is what we're doing now right? through Zoom. Even this meeting, I wish I was there with Paul, hanging out, having, you know, giving him a hug right now. And it has been a long time. Right? But, but that's not the reality of today's time. We have to be very mindful about that, that in order for us to be healthy, this is sort of the direction we have to take. From a scientific perspective, you know, a virus is a virus is a virus and it does what it does. It doesn't respect any of your views, anything of that sort, it, it, it's, it does what it does and we just have to write this out. So- with you, with you saying that, Dr. Navarro, a quick question going into what what is it, you know, with us, you know, tighten up the belt, you know, this is the most important time in our lifetime, most likely with, with where we're going, how we're growing. Right. How does one deal with the mental anguish or anxiety, depression they may be dealing with as a good athlete that we're always the ones as, as athletes saying like toughen up buttercup or, you know, your, your mental capacity is there. You just got to do it. And so our mental fortitude says we got to pass through it, but our personal mind is saying something different possibly. Yeah, I mean, this is something that we used to talk a lot about, right, Paul? Like, yeah. There's this internal voice. This uh, I call it the internal bully, right? That's really what it is. Uh, let's sort of call it what it really is, and it's a bully. You, you all have one. We all have one. The majority of us have one. There's a very slight, small people of the population that don't have one, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about that we have this thing that as soon as you wake up, it is there waiting for you, telling you sleep in a little bit more. You know, it's still a little too warm to get out of bed. It's too comfortable to get out of bed. You know what, take a recovery day. That's my favorite one that I hear often. Take a recovery day today, you're a little sore, right? Um, and as soon as I hear that, it's like, I gotta get up, right? I gotta get up. This thing is starting to talk to me a little early. So. One thing I do is get up really early to beat it out of bed, right? I mean, I really, really challenge myself to get up early. I don't get up early because I love getting up early. I get up early because this is the only way it's going to happen. It's only, and so as a professional, my schedule, and especially since I work in mental health, and right now we're about to experience a, pan, a, a different kind of pandemic, and it's the mental health pandemic, I need to more than ever make sure I get this in. So when I was at, at, at Eagle Rock, I mean, I was one of the early 5 a.m. or 5.30, 5, was it 5, 5 a.m.? I was trying to convince you to get a 4.30, but I never, we never it's got funny. enough members to do that. It's um, funny you say that because I told the you know, group before, I was like, you know, Francisco is our reason why we had 5.30. And the <laughs> reality is he told me, I guarantee I'll get 10 people for 4.30 a.m. You can do it. Like, I know it. I, it'll work. <laughs> And I, I believe it would work too. It's the neighbors waking up at 5 a.m. hearing barbells clanking that I didn't think was, was right. But yeah, <laughs> Francisco has always been a proponent and supporter of getting up early and doing this, but continue on that. Yeah, because I think what, what you're doing is you're beat, I mean, so from a psychological perspective, you're beating this internal bully, right? And you get it done. 
and you move through your day. Now, it's not just about getting it done that matters here. It's not like you're going down the check boxes. It's going back to what I started saying earlier. You're gonna feel better, right? Why are you gonna feel better? Better? It's because you're, you're, you're having dopamine released, right? You're involving the, the, the frontal lobe of your brain, which we all know it as the captain of the ship, right? That is really important to get going. And I don't think it's by any mistake, but when you look at the brain, uh, I got a brain actually, let me grab it. <laughs> it's a fake model, don't worry, it's not a real one. So, uh, Pulling it out of the freezer. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> so, you know, this is what I like talking to my patients with or the kids, I mean, the visual is always better. When talking about the front of the lobe, this is the captain of the ship, the prefrontal cortex. It's what really drives us to, to create goals, to reach them, to organize them, to plan. All that process happens here. Right behind it is this little red strip, if you see it. And that's the motor cortex, right? Now, I don't know why this happened. Evolution, God, whatever beliefs you have. I don't know why this happened, but this is the way this has evolved. And the motor cortex is right behind the frontal lobe. That means, that means we got to do some movement. In my mind, in my scientific mind, if this is what we're trying to warm up to get going, we got to get this going too, right? And, and I do think that that is critical. When I look at it, I, I've sat down a lot about this, looking at the brain, looking at the literature. Why is it set up this way? And, and when we're all sitting there trying to get fit, I'm, me included, right? Or, you know, getting your cardiovascular up, if you have some bad labs that came through and you're like, now I got to take care of myself, whatever the motivation you have, I am here to tell you it's, it's really not because of that. It's, it's, there's a bigger reason. The bigger reason is, think about why you sleep every night. Think about why you brush your teeth every day. Think about why we now wash our hands, everything we do now. It's all about hygiene, right? At, at this point, and one of the biggest messages that I have to the community of Pasadena where I am and, and to my team and to anyone I talk about this is that this is actually the new hygiene, is moving your body, right? It, it needs to happen. Now, do you need to go full throttle hit every day? I'm not saying that. What I am saying is move somehow. There's days that I just walk and that's what I'm doing, but I'm walking up a hill, right? Uh, with 60 pounds on my back, right? I mean, so it looks a little different every day for me and I'm doing things to constantly move. Now, I'll be honest with you, as much as I am a big advocate of getting up at that magic hour of 4.30 to get going, there are days like this morning. And I was hoping, I'm like, yep, I got up at 4.30 today and I did it. You know what? I didn't. I got up at six, I slept in. You know, I usually like to go to sleep at nine. I'm a father of a nine-year-old boy who, who wants to spend time with his father, right? So I'm here 10 plus hours in the clinic and I gotta go home and switch it and get into dad mode. You know, we got, we built a, a, a fort, him and his mother built a fort and I helped sort of make it, you know, daddy sites a little too small. So, <laughs> so, you know, and then he wants to watch a movie, you know, nine, forget about nine, it's 11 p.m., right? So now I have to adjust. And it's all about adjustment and accommodation. One thing that, that this time of the pandemic is really teaching us all is adapting. And not just adapting, but adopting a new way of doing things. And so the, the sooner we do that, the better this will be for you. And, and you know, I, I am respecting the, the, the experience of loss because all of us are, have experienced loss during this time, right? And it comes with low mood and it comes with sadness and it comes with anger and it comes with denial. This can be happening. And it comes with negotiation of like, what, let me do this so I can beat it. You know what, we can't. So we got to get to that point of loss at, and we all have different stages of this. Getting that point of acceptance, right? When we get to that place of acceptance, 
we can change, we can adopt, we can adapt, we can move through this process. So part of the reason I move all the time is I'm trying to quickly recover from loss, from disappointment, from challenges, moving through it, moving through it, moving through it. And it's, it's never ending, guys. It's never ending. Because as long as we have a brain that's operating and it has neurons and connections, you want to strengthen those connections. You want to improve them. I mean, I think you see that with, with your workouts of the day, right? You know, the next time you see that watch show up, you know you got to be your last time, right? That's improvement. So we're constantly making sure we're monitoring improvement. We all do it in different ways. But, but, I, but I, it, is, it is one of these things that I do believe is now should be part of our hygiene. You know, when we're looking at this infection that's happening, some of the people that are most attacked are those with metabolic syndrome, right? So high blood pressure issues, diabetes, whether it's type one, type two, other autoimmune disorders and things like that, hyperlipidemia. So it's all the things that move towards this idea of obesity, right? I mean, since I was a kid, and this is a fact, I did a presentation this in Washington DC a couple of years ago, and I was surprised, I was presenting the data, but I was surprised that in my lifetime, obesity has tripled in our country. Right? I mean, in one lifetime, which is just 40 years, it's not much. And, and we got to pay attention to that. And those are the most vulnerable people. And so we, we really have to start thinking this as hygiene. So don't want to about- beat the point much more, but I do want to make the point that that is really important. When you talk about obesity tripling in your lifetime and most of our lifetime, of course, going into diet and nutrition is a major part of what's happened and the what's readily available to us pre-made meals um, instead of home cooked type things portion control we talked in a lot of our hygiene or wellness um, courses on a plate size it used to be an 11 inch plate was a normal size plate and now 14 inch plates are the new norm if you go to cheesecake factory uh, 18 inch plate is the norm for for one serving are there ways that you would approach that and being aware of what Dr. Navarro went from 210 pounds to 160 pounds over the course of 16 months to yeah. get to the, the um, bodybuilding. Yeah. Like what, what are some changes that you had to do? Yeah. as? A- yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, what's, and this always starts, this always happens with me. I get like a little challenge or someone challenges me and then it becomes something bigger than it has to be. So it's just the way my brain is wired. <laughs> so back in, back a couple of years ago, uh, my son, in fact, we went to a bodybuilding show. I went to go support a, a niece of uh, my goddaughter in San Diego. And I said, I, I used to do that. I used to do that back in the nineties. And he looked at me and he said, no, you didn't. Oh, that was like a big challenge, right? Like, and then it was in my mind, I was like, oh, I'll show you, right? But it became bigger than that. It became, no. The only way I am going to help my son to avoid this triple effect of obesity that's happened in my lifetime is to show him how to live a better life, right? Is that it starts with, with you. And for any parents that are listening to this, um, it's not what you're saying. It's not what you're recommending. It's not what you're yelling sometimes that they'll listen to. They won't. It, it doesn't happen that way. It's what you're doing that they're paying attention to. So if you want them to move on this journey, uh, you may have, you have to expose them to it. I mean, you know that I used to do that because I used to bring DeMarco to the gym often. And then he started doing his own little wads that he was doing, you know, now he's a little gymnast. He's a gymnast gymnast at this point. well, he was hanging on the ring to climbing on the bar. To, That's you know, right. He's got a lot of, it's fun to watch. Yeah. The curiosity and, that goes through these children's brains when they're looking at how to scale up to a pull-up bar to see something that we're all doing. That's it's right. Very, very intriguing. Yeah. So it, it really requires, you know, us to, to show. So it went to this thing where I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do a local show and that's it. 
and it went to this thing where you know I didn't expect it to happen, but it went to like, hey, you qualify for Worlds, and I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, so it's gonna be New York. Are you are you ready? It's gonna be in a month, and I'm like, whoa, I thought I was done. Okay, yeah, let me let me only do another this. month. Only another month, right? <laughs> of, of, and and by any means, like there's extreme parts of this sport that I don't think are actually healthy. I'll, I'll be really honest about that. Um, and so we, we do have to find a balance. I think at the end of the day, it's really finding a balance that's healthy, right? So as much as physique and all those things are, look good, uh, they're, they're, they'll, all of them will tell you, you know, they don't feel good, uh, including me, I didn't feel good. So it's important to sort of take space, but it's, it is a competitive sport and, and it does take a lot of time to get to that point. So yeah, I went from, you know, closer to 215 um, and I always think of, of, of the moment, I wish I had a picture to show you and I'll, and I'll share this picture so you, maybe you can show it to your members, but this picture of graduation day from UC Irvine and in, when was that? 2005, right? 2005, wearing my gown, I'm all proud and I'm like 220, but I'm like the happiest day of my life, right? And I always look back to that day because I realized that I had, had achieved something mentally, but I let go of something that I used to really, really use to cope with stress, uh, anxiety, uh, sleep disturbances. And that was getting in the grind of my body. That's not, how I, that's not how I look when I started med school, but the amount of stress, you know, those 80 to 100 hours, and I, I shouldn't say 100 hours because it's illegal, but I was doing some 100 hour work weeks back then that we shouldn't have been doing, but we did. Um, and, and you know, what's, in, what's interesting about that is I, when I look back, I noticed that my brain was where it's supposed to be. You know, I was meditating, doing a certain experiment with a few things like that, but my body was so far from where my brain was. And so this whole idea of bodybuilding and sort of morphing my body, transforming my body became is how can I match how I feel inside, where I think my mind is to what it looks outside. And so it's this idea of integration, right? I, I go to this idea of integration, which is kind of how I practice now. I practice integrative psychiatry, which is not just a pill, not just talk therapy, it's movement, it's meditation, it's nutrition, it's recovery, it's sleep, it's mobility. I mean, it's complicated, but that's what it needs. I mean, you, you saw that this model, of, I mean, it's simplified, but it looks complicated, just the model of the brain, right? The brain is not that simple to figure out. I think, you know, in the beginning, when I was thinking about medical school and thinking about my profession, I was thinking about surgery. That was my thing. I love doing surgery. I, I really enjoyed it. There was something about it. But, you know, I can see an injury. You can close the hole. You can remove the tumor. You can do all these different things. It's, it's easy in some ways if you think about it. What was mysterious to me is, is this box that we're, we're having trouble figuring out. And, and I, didn't say, I didn't think I had any answers. I, I had too many questions. And so now when I'm going, you know, that was 2005, this is 2020 guys, right? I mean, it's 15 years, look back and um, I have some answers. I don't have all the answers, but I now have some answers. And the research is catching up. So let me share a little bit of, of why it is so important to start incorporating movement into, into, into your mental health, into your health in general. Um, and, and number one is we, we understand that some type of, you know, when it comes to anxiety and depression, when it comes to anxiety and depression, we understand that some type of group dynamic, and if something goes back to when you and I were, were hypothesizing, Paul, and I was telling you about group dynamic. Well, now we know the research is pretty clear that team sports or some type of group dynamic in sports is preventative for mental health issues specifically around the issue of depression and anxiety, right? So, I mean, you guys know, Hold I mean, I have to explain to you guys, you guys know that this togetherness that you experience, there's something to it and just being in the gym by yourself, lifting 
iron, right? Absolutely. So that's number one. Number the other one that we saw, and the second one was like this cycling, and I think it has to do with camaraderie, but also the the aerobic exercise of it that I think we've noticed. And then the third one, which I was super excited, I mean, you guys will be super excited about it too, is strength and conditioning, right? So, I mean, you got number one reason, group, sports, dynamics, strength and conditioning. I mean, it's kind of what you guys do, right? It's what we do here too. I'm doing a smaller group sometimes, but it's because of that power dynamic of group that's so important that sort of makes us make makes it cohesive makes us be part of something bigger part of a tribe part of something you believe in and and for you guys today for me it's your health right that 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 you really do translate this that the next time you wake up in the morning like uh, i must skip out i'll do i'll go later or remember it's like think about will you do that would you go to the office or if you have a crush on someone or you know, you're not gonna brush your teeth or floss or do those things. I mean, it's the same idea here. You know, I just wish that in a, in a different world, in a parallel universe, we had transparent skulls that we can see your brain, so you can see like, oh, you didn't you didn't work out today. I could tell. I could tell. <laughs> but that's not the reality. But you know, it does happen with your breath and your teeth. So use that idea, that analogy, for working out. That's solid. When when you've been going through all these things, we in our wellness challenge right now, we have sleep, exercise, nutrition, hydration, rest and recovery, mental wellness as our pillars of foundational success. And we're working on small pieces of each one of those. Which one of those would be your highest priority for Francisco personal? Oh man. You know, that's 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 a good question. Um, and I'm always having trouble with these, you know, because there's books on just sleep. Yeah. There's books on just exercise. There's books on just nutrition. You know, I got a book here on the four pillar plan, which includes those, right? Yeah. And, and, and as, I, as I step back and I do some intro, in, in, introspection about it, I, I think about how they're all important. You know, it's like I want to get married to just one of those. But that's saying, that's saying I, I work out for my cardiovascular system, which is not true, right? I mean, right. there's this integrative process. I mean, why didn't we call it neurovascular system? That it, 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 I think it actually prioritizes your brain before it starts prioritizing everything else. So I look at it more like a hub, right? And and, and, and the hub, it's, it, it's me at the core. And here goes exercise, here goes recovery, sleep, here goes nutrition, and, and it turns. And, and as it turns, I'm like, okay. And, and I look at which one I need more of. And so it's a balancing act. It's almost like when I've talked to some of my patients about this, it's, I go, imagine you have four tanks and you got the exercise always top, right? And maybe you got nutrition top too, but you're sleeping like two hours a night, Not right? Much I, mean, I mean, in terms of recovery, if we, I mean, it would, the science is pretty, pretty obvious there in terms of recovery and muscle recovery. And I mean, you're gonna have a hard time, right? So. So they all are very important. It's just when we think about the individual person, you got to know where you're topping off and where I've learned the hard way. I got injuries. I got, you know, a tight right hip. I've always had one. I got a left Achilles issue. That's always, it doesn't stop me. You know, I was the king of modification. I still am. You know, I, I still modify when I have to, if the pain is too much, but, but it doesn't stop me from moving. And so mobility recovery. Now, in the fourth decade of life, mobility is king yeah. and queen also, right? And it's important to understand where are we on this life cycle, right? Where are we on this life cycle, on this journey that we're on, right? Like, I mean, when I think about being your guys' age, right, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to stretch out. I don't need to do any of that. I mean, you guys forced me, 
you guys forced me, which I, I appreciate because I still use some of those. But, you know, that's all I spent on. Sometimes that in itself is a workout. Like I'm sweating, putting a, you know, one of those mobility, mobility balls right on my abductor and I'm sweating and my muscles going, Ugh, it's like shivering. Right. And so I would just say that, that, you know, make an assessment, make an assessment of what's, where, where are you topping off and where are you avoiding? If you're avoiding somewhere, then that's where you should be starting to refill. So if it's sleep, guess what you have to do? You know, figure out your schedule to make sure you get at least seven, eight hours of sleep. So that, that's where I've been. I've been sort of more, where am I at? I was just sitting down with um, my coach, you know, one of my coaches, and I'm, I was explaining how, how bad it's been. And, and so now we're, we're, we're modifying, right? Um, and you know, I, this is something I think a good opportunity to talk about coaching. Because, you know, I, I really appreciated what you guys did for me and, and the importance of, of having a coach tell me what to do how to do it, show me how to do good, do good form. And, and that's something that stayed with me, right? And I realize that it, it's something that we just have to continue to do, right? So whether in business, for example, you gotta have a coach, right? I mean, absolutely. I, I come from the world of medicine where we get zero business uh, education. Uh, you know, I'm you reading. Work at hospital. Yeah, yeah, you and did. that's all good. good. You know, reading is good, but but you got to get someone. So same thing when it comes to your body, right? You got to get someone to coach because we have blind spots. There's a lot of blind spots that we have, and we have to fill them up. And and the only way you can sometimes see those is by having someone letting you know, hey, how much are you sleeping? You're not sleeping enough. You know, I'll back off. You know, no, don't back off. Don't back off my workout. No, it goes. You're not sleeping. You need to recover. And I'm like, fine, I'll recover. Fine. What do I need to eat? And so, you know, I think with nutrition, just to kind of make a point on nutrition, I'm not an expert in it um, by any means. Um, I think I know enough that I think it's really important uh, to balance those things out. I know two things that I think are critical to maintain a certain body composition. And that is, what are your macros and your micros, right? What do they consist of? Right. And, you know, there's this whole idea of it's calories in, calories out, right? Which is true, generally speaking. But you got to be mindful about what those are. Like, you have to. It can't just be Jack in a Box and McDonald's every day and you're staying within your macros, right? It's, it's really healthy options, right? And so, and then, and then protein. Like, you got to get your lean protein in. I was thinking about this the other day and I was like, wow, if you want to, if there's, there's, a, there's, there's, and again, this is not my expertise. This is not advice regarding clinical or medical. This is just sort of what I've understood. Um, but if you want to gain some muscle and gain some weight, you go up on your calories that are good, healthy options. You got to have high protein, right? If you want to decrease you got to decrease some of those calories, but guess what? You got to still have high protein, right? And so I always found, I find that very fascinating because we overcomplicate it. Yeah. Or oh, try this new thing. Try this old, you know, it's always try something new and we're getting the runaround every single time. And we always fall for it because we're in this place, we're in a hole and we're like, we want to get out. So we want to believe. So it, it, it really is, the consistency, the consistency of your workout, the consistency of how you eat, the consistency of your sleep. It sounds boring. I know it is boring, <laughs> but I'm telling you what's not boring are the benefits. The benefits that you get later on the day, later on in the week, the month, the year. That's how I got from 210 to 160 is that consistency. And I just stuck to it. I just stuck to it. And I still stick to it. You know, this is truth. And I, I, I just want to be really open about this. My coach has said, all right, now that you're done with the competition, 160 is unhealthy. Let's get you to 180. So this was back in December. In December, 
um, mid-December was the competition. And then I'm like, all right, what's next? What's next? What are we doing? What are we doing? What, right? And he said, you're going to have to relax, relax. I need you to gain some weight. Like, wait, what? I go, I worked all this to like, right? And then you kind of get into this place. And so this is the the bodybuilder in me, the competitor in me. And, and you know, and I know why I lost, you know, meaning I came in second place. Um, and, which, and I lost to the UK, some guy from the UK, who was just solid all around. Um, but they're like, no, we're going to get you up to a healthy weight. I'm a healthy weight. I thought I was, no, this is not healthy. You don't feel healthy. You're a guy. I don't have a low energy. I have all the different things. Fluctuations of hormones go up and down too. We're going to get you at 180 and we're going to keep you at 180. So this was December, January, mid January. I got to like close to one. You know, people get quick because you start like increasing the calories, right? Again, that's what happens. So from January, mid January to right now, I've been, and kid you not, just because I've been consistent, 179 to 181. That's where I live right now. 179, 181. That's where I am. And I'm just sort of following the plan, right? The benefits, I mean, imagine if I was 210 right now and then with my hip issue and my Achilles, I mean, it's just killing me, right? And so I do think that it's, it's this whole health body approach to making these changes, these tweaks. The consistency is really, really, really important. That's what matters. It sounds boring. I, you know, and I'm talking to the, to the 10 year olds, to the 15 year olds, to even like the young adults, the college students in this room. And I'm like, Hey, I know if you want something overnight, you want some magic, but when it comes to getting to your goals, it really is the day in the day out of that. It's not going to change. It's never going to change. That's going to be the way right? until we figure out with time how to evolve and change these things quicker. And it's going to be hundreds of years from now before that happens. Right. This is the only way. Right. Um, so I'll leave it there. Right. I'll leave it there with, I'm going to with try to transition nutrition and things like that. And what's important here quick, just with, with what you said and it going into everything is important and consistency is, is ideal. And I want to bring up my, we talked about this early on the great depression being a big issue and this being the next pandemic what we experience. I have a hundred year old great aunt. She lived in Napa. She grew up there, born and raised and you know, she's frugal, but her consistency and the things she does day in and day out of watering the grass at 6am, just like what Dr. Navarro was talking about. Um, doing all the things that are little things to make sure of. she still heats up bricks on the, on the wood stove at night, carries them up to her bed and puts them out of her bed and at the top instead of using heat just to preserve the, the property. And when, when we talk about that, she was nine. Her parents instilled a lot of things that are just like, hey, let's go make this happen and, and be really good at what we do. And whether it was showing or talking, like you talked about the showing and doing of, we got to go get the grapes. We have to go produce the, the orchard, uh, the, the chickens, whatever it may be. Her work ethic is what I have strived to be ever since I watched her when I lived with her for a month, uh, one summer in ninth grade. Mm -hmm. What is this new normalcy we're going to go through? What are some things that we can take when you say like, this is our biggest change. What are some things we can take away from this knowing like, how do we instill grit in ourselves, in our kids, the people around us, and remind everyone we're, we're in this together in a lot of ways, but you got to come in from, from within. You got to do this for you. Is there yeah. anything you can like build on that or give us for secret? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that's like the multi million dollar question, right? Is like, what's the answer to being resilient, right? What's, what's the way to do it? Um, I've been lucky enough to, to be trained by, by those researchers um, that are looking at that question. Um, and it really starts with not a, not a, it's not an instructional video that you'll learn from, right? It's not gonna happen that way. It's not gonna be even this me telling you, to be honest with you. It, it really is gonna come down to, to, to really walking the walk. Right, like walking the walk is so important. Right, I, I, I mean, going back to this idea of why do 
I think that exercise is one of the main pillars, one of the major pillars of, of our optimizing mental health. I do think that it's really primarily so that I can provide self-care, so that I can be available in service to others, service to my patient and the population that I'm serving, to still have that energy to be a parent, to then show those examples at home to my family, to my friends. Um, and so, you know, I'm gonna take it to, to, to what one researcher told me one day and it stuck with me and I may have shared this with you or not, but someone told me, and I, and I come, I grew up in South LA in, in a pretty disenfranchised part of, 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 of our city, um, with a lot of violence and, and crime. And, and I remember I was sitting down with her. This is already me as a psychiatrist, a psychiatrist in training. And she said to me, you know, with all those kids in, in those areas, you know, unfortunately, it's, you know, location is, is destiny. And, you know, she was someone that's highly respected and I just sort of took that with me and I'm like, okay, wow. If this is what researchers are seeing, which is, I mean, she's just talking about the data, right? Then what we're doing is, is we're creating a narrative to tell people that you can't do it, that you're not capable of, right? So we have to find role models, leaders within our communities, right? Whether it's at Eagle Rock, whether it's here in Pasadena, we just have to find leaders that can guide and let us know this is how you do it. And the only way that's gonna happen is by us doing it, us showing it. So you, Paul, you know, it's not just not being in there and not doing it, it's you doing it, right? It, it's it's, you know, it, it really is about mirroring. The power of mirror neurons is what I do. You know, it's not, it's not just the medication, the exercise, it's using my understanding that what I'm able to reflect to you so that it, it can create a little spark, maybe a connection within you so that you can now go on your own path and figure out what that is for you. So the next time you're, 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 and it starts early in the morning. This is why I go back to this. When you got that little voice in your head say, don't get up, don't worry about it. You need to be standing up and guess what? Even if your eyes are closed and you're still snoring and you, you got to put on your shoes, you got to walk out that door and then you got to do it again and again and again. And, and that's how you build. I mean, really, that's how you build resiliency. You know, having good connections, good relationships with people. At the end, it comes down to what this is challenges us, currently challenges us to do. And that is to be away from each other when all we want to do is hang out with each other. You, you said earlier that, you know, like, I wish I could give you a hug. And in our 11 a.m. call, we asked, like, what's the one thing that you, you need most in your life? And for me, it's hugs. I just love that physical touch from the brother and sisterhood that we have at the gym to at home with my family. That physical touch means so much to me. And it's, when you don't get to do that over and over, it's something taken away from you. And I, you're, you're so true on where it is of doing it over again, putting the workload in. So you, the habit becomes a reality instead of, uh, you know, perceived thought and cool, cool idea. Just like those diets are that are a quick solution. They should work tomorrow. That's right. But and we're, I'll, we're right at three. And, and I'll end with a little note, you know, and, and that is I have my 80 year old mother with me right now, living with me since March. I have a twin sister who works in Kaiser Sunset in the ER. I mean, she's literally in the front lines. Right? I had to go pick up my mother. So she is not at risk because she's 80 years old. She's living with me now. She's been there. I had yet to give her a hug. Right? And she's in my own house. 
And it's her fear that she'll get something. And so I have to do everything in my power to stay six feet apart. I don't want to. I do. And I do it for her because I love her. Right? And DeMarco, guess what? He has to do it. I was going to say, and to put a nine-year-old through that unknown, you know. And when he tells you, and, and when he tells you, it's so sad that I can't hug my, hug my nana. I'm like, I give him a hug because we're, we're good. We're fine. Right? I'm not 80. He's not 80. Right? <laughs> and so we just have to figure out a way to replace that right now whenever we can. So. Yeah, it's a new norm. Yeah. Is, I think, you know, if there's anything else that you have, the most important thing I think for us to finish up the closing, wrapping up is, yeah, yeah. Just talking about how people should seek help and in this, you know, being aware of mental health month, what is it that it's okay to ask questions? It's, what, are, what are some professional reminders that we can leave with them? Um, and if I can add, Paul, um, also, if there's any recommendations on what other outlets there are besides exercise for people that suffer from anxiety and depression um, that they can resort to that you would uh, recommend? So one thing that I also brought to you, something that I, I oh, there, thanks. something that I, I resort to also is meditation. That's something that I do often. Um, those who know me pretty well, they know that that's, that's also part of my hygienic protocol. Um, and it doesn't have to be like 20 minutes. Um, it can be three minutes. It can be even a mindful walk. You know, like when I'm having a long day and right now with everyone's worry about what's going on, I mean, I have to get out of this room and I go for a walk and all I'm doing is just paying attention to the breeze, the birds, just like trying to be present and trying to figure out where, where I am and things are okay. Remind myself that so I can go back into what I call the dungeon in here, right? Because it's I'm, I'm here all the time, um, and and be able to to continue to help other people. And so I would say that finding a some type of meditation practice would be very very helpful. If exercise is brushing the equivalent of brushing your teeth, I would say that meditation is equivalent to flossing your teeth. I think you have to do both, and and you can. There isn't one way. I think there's so many different ways. And, you know, even starting with what men, a lot of people who have anxiety struggle staying still and, and, and find it very uncomfortable to be quiet. And I always say what you fear and what you're trying to avoid is where you should go. So to take, if, if you can just do 30 seconds, start there. Start where you can. That's really where it matters. Start where you can. Thank you. Small, small little wins. Find those ways to accomplish a little bit. Gain the That's, confidence. Right. That's right. And what about people finding ways to cope or help? So, you know, I, I would say, so, you know, when I think about why I'm doing this, why, why MHI, why Mind Health Institute Pasadena, why this integrative approach, um, I, I do think that first, and in part of our mission here is, is to eradicate, it really eradicate the stigma of getting help and seeking help. You know, it's so it, it mind boggling to me that stigma in itself, which is, you know, a big barrier to getting mental health, receiving mental health, is almost like part of an epidemic. It's like a disease almost. And so before you actually get the help, you got to confront this thing, which might look like fear, embarrassment, shame, um, weakness. I, I, I'm here to tell you that, 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 that it isn't weakness. I'm here to tell you that vulnerability is strength. And it's through the voice that you use to share how you feel that you'll break through. And so just some things to be, to look out for, you know, just some sort of, not red flags, but certainly some pink flags, if you will, to, to be mindful about if, if you're not reaching out if you're isolating, if you're having low motivation, energy, feeling hopeless, if you're losing concentration, 
you're not able to be as productive. You're, if you're ignoring your interest, those are some reasons to be concerned that you might actually need to get some help. And, and right now with, with, with psychiatry especially or, mental, or just therapy in general, you know, you don't have to be in the same room to get the help. You couldn't do telehealth and still get the help you need. Um, but I would say like with red flags, if you're starting to get dark, if that internal bully is becoming your controlling power and it's telling you to end your life, then no, I mean, just know that, that that is not the way. Know that there is help and it is through calling someone, talking to someone, find ways to connect. And because and, there is help out there. So don't let stigma get in the way of that. Reach out. No judgment when it comes to those points. Exactly. Thank you, Dr. Navarro Paul, if I may. I think you're trying to wrap up at this point um, before we do that. Uh, for the people that we have here from the Wellness Challenge, thank you guys for joining in. For those of you who are not part of the Wellness Challenge but joined in for the call, also thank you for taking advantage of the opportunity to hear Dr. Navarro and get a little insight on that, um, which I think uh, many of us are um, you know, struggling with to some degree. Um, and it makes me very happy to hear Dr. Navarro say the very famous word of stigma over mental health. Um, we talked about how to uh, address this point from a, um, we are professionals in exercise, right? Dr. Navarro is a professional with mental health, but I think that that big stigma on being able to simply talk about these issues is highly important. And as a community, where we see each other almost on a daily at the gym and now you know through our screens on zoom i think it's um it's an important outlet for you guys um to have and it's also important for us to let you guys know that we are there as an outlet simply to talk about whatever it might be that you know you might need help with we know uh, in the wellness challenge we've been talking about, we've been focusing on five pillars pertaining to exercise, right? Pertaining to the gym, to our community, which is hydration, nutrition, exercise, um, rest and recovery, and mental health being one of them. Um, for those of you who are not on the wellness challenge, but are uh, interested in joining in on a call anytime, please, please feel free to join in on a call. I, we're more than happy to have you. Um, we talk about these things. We're doing it from a, uh, community perspective. We're not giving you guys professional advice because we are not professionals on the matter, but we're all on the, I've heard this before, we're all in the storm, right? Yes, we are all in the storm, but we're not on the same boat. And we might be dealing with these things differently, but I also know that there's a lot of validation and a lot of comfort in knowing that you're not the only one that might be struggling with these issues, whatever they may be for every one of you. So thank you, Dr. Navarro, for that insight. And thank you for uh, mentioning that, you know, the social aspect of it is very important. And simply talking about it with a friend, with uh, us, with anyone that you feel comfortable with will make a, a, a big difference. And um, just know that Paul and myself and all of the NILA staff is absolutely there for you guys in that regard. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Wrap it up. Um, again, greatly appreciate the time to connect with you, Dr. Navarro. Uh, a lot of you that are online, I know, have seen him long ago in your early classes, and um, I'm always enthralled and excited to reconnect with friends of, you know, where we started, where we've gone, and what we continue to do. Um, and so thank you. And you'd like to close with Dr. Navarro. Oh, anything that's, oh, thank you. Thank you guys for inviting me. Um, honestly, this is my first, my first podcast. I, I'm um, really Ooh. honored to, to have done this. And um, this is a direction I'm going, just another way to get the word out and educate. So I'm, I'm really honored that you allowed me to use this platform to one, assist you with what I think is a very important critical pillar um, at, at your place, but also I think globally, I think should be a, just a pillar that we all should have. 
So thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share some of those thoughts. And hopefully um, you guys took something away from this that can be useful, if not for you, for someone you know, um, and apply it. And you know, I'll leave you with this last thing. And, and it's not knowledge that is powerful. That's a nice little saying, but it's the application of that knowledge that is powerful. And so use this to then apply and get your outcomes. I'll, I'll leave with that. I love it. It's not knowledge, it's application of knowledge that is powerful. That's right. And this is a podcast with Dr. Navarro from Mind Health Institute Pasadena. Thank you all for listening and look forward to the next one. Okay.